I hope I didn't wake you. Don't lose your mind. It's only a movie. I don't want to leave here, all right? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 psychological thrillers. For this list, we're taking a look at the most suspenseful, dramatic, and emotionally draining films in the psychological thriller genre. We'll be trying to steer this list away from pure psychological horror films such as Rosemary's Baby, as those deserve a list of their own. What have you done to it? What have you done to its eyes? Oh, and considering that we just might be getting into the roots of why these films are so troubling, a spoiler alert is probably in order. Number 10, Insomnia. Although many movie fans might be more familiar with Christopher Nolan's 2002 remake, this psychological thriller was originally brought to us back in 1997 by Norwegian-born director Eric Scholberg. The film follows a Swedish cop played by Stellan Skarsgård who visits a Norwegian town with up to 24 hours of daylight, while on the hunt for a murderer who always seems to be one step ahead. The lack of sleep makes it difficult for Skarsgård's character to retain his sanity for much of his investigation, causing the police inspector to make one very costly mistake. No matter which version you're lucky enough to watch, Insomnia is still a nail-biting thriller. Number 9. The Machinist I know who you are. Christian Bale earned notable praise and awards for his portrayal of a troubled industrial worker whose sleep deprivation and resulting rapid weight loss results in hallucinations, paranoia, and near insanity. Is someone chasing you? Not yet. But they will when they find out who I am. It's startling how dramatic Bale's physical form changes almost before our eyes in The Machinist, due to the actor's frightening commitment to the role. Hey. <laughs> Perfect fit. <laughs> Bale's character, Trevor Resnick, eventually takes on the appearance of a walking corpse, developing sores and lesions on his body, in addition to the emaciation. You okay? Don't I look okay? If you were any thinner, you wouldn't exist. The machinist may not know if he's awake or asleep, but the audience is certain of how uncomfortable and creepy this film truly is. You know so little about me. What if I turn into a werewolf or something? Number 8. Jacob's Ladder <laughs> Personal loss, post-traumatic stress, and dissociative disorder all afflict the troubled lead character of director Adrian Lin's disturbing film, played with tragic conviction by Tim Robbins. How'd it happen? No one really knows I say it blew up. The titular Jacob seems to have developed multiple personalities after suffering the loss of his child, not to mention the after effects of serving in the Vietnam War, and goes through much of the movie wondering exactly what's real and what isn't, as all of his neuroses reach a boiling point. Dream on. God, no. It's a film that remains thought-provoking and frightening to this day. Number 7. Funny Games This is the second film on our list to have been remade, with the original 1997 version of Funny Games seeing an updated version starring Tim Roth and Naomi Watts only a decade later. He just wants to play. It's a strange way to play. Both films follow a family who's tormented by a duo of disturbed young men while on vacation in a remote house by the lake. <laughs> Is this <laughs> Abuse, humiliation, and violence are only some of the agonies the family suffers through during their ordeal. <laughs> the 
the thugs even break the fourth wall and directly address the audience, manipulating the film's narrative in a manner that parallels our own perverse obsession with violence and the media. Sie sind doch auf ihrer Seite, oder? Also, auf wen setzen Sie? Number six, American Psycho. Do you know what Ed Gein said about women? Ed Gein, Maitre D. Canal Bar? No. Serial killer. Author Brett Easton Ellis published the source material novel for this film back in 1991, detailing the life of a psychotic businessman and serial killer by the name of Patrick Bateman. <laughs> Christian Bale appears for the second time on our list in the titular role, delivering a performance that earned the actor both critical and commercial praise in what many agree is one of his greatest roles. I want to stab you to death and play around with your blood. The film's murder set pieces are often punctuated by Bateman's appraisal of 80s pop music. You like Huey Lewis in the news? While in later scenes, he delivers dialogue so brutal and biting that it somehow makes this violent and satirical movie-watching experience perversely quotable. My pain is constant and sharp, and I do not hope for a better world for anyone. Number five. Seven. Wait a minute, I thought all you did was kill innocent people. Innocent? Is that supposed to be funny? If you're seeking the roots of director David Fincher's affinity for the psychological thriller, explored in such films as The Game and Gone Girl, then look no further than his 1995 masterpiece. I'd like to speak to my lawyer, please. This rough and gritty police procedural follows two detectives on the hunt for a deranged serial killer who's using the seven deadly sins as inspiration for his slayings. Gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, pride, lust, and envy. Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman play the rookie and veteran detectives respectively, and both deliver great performances as the corpses begin piling up, thanks to the psychopath's imaginative handiwork. What the hell? That's yeah, just the call an ambulance. Sloth, lust, pride. Seven does not hesitate to reflect humanity's darkest desires back at us in all of their grim reality. You know, this isn't going to have a happy ending. Number four, Memento. I finally found him. Christopher Nolan is back again messing with our heads with his marvelous mind-melting experience simply known as Memento. You can't get scared, but hey, can you get angry? Yes! Guy Pearce plays a man who suffers from anterograde amnesia after the murder of his wife. And I have no short-term memory. I know who I am, I know all about myself. I just, since my injury, I can't make new memories. Everything fades. Pierce's character Leonard is then forced to permanently tattoo key phrases about his life onto his skin in order to piece together the mystery, while at the same time coming to terms with his innermost secrets. Look, I'm sorry I don't remember you. It's nothing personal. I do have information for you. The film is best enjoyed through multiple viewings, as that way we can get a firmer grasp on Nolan's complex yet satisfying noir-inspired tale of identity. We all need mirrors to remind ourselves who we are. I'm no different. Number three, Black Swan. I came to ask for the part. Obsession and perfection are just two of the themes which rear their heads here in director Darren Aronofsky's troubling tale of a beautiful but mentally fragile dancer who is determined to be cast in the lead role in Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. Uh, it's about a girl who gets turned into a swan and she needs love to break the spell. Okay. But her prince falls for the wrong girl and <clears throat> so she kills herself. Natalie Portman's portrayal of Nina Sayers is magnetic as we follow her relationships with her sexually aggressive instructor, her emotionally abusive mother, and a devious understudy. See, I'm just I'm worried about the next act. I'm just not sure you're feeling up to it. Aronofsky's combination of gorgeous cinematography, A-list acting, and legitimately cringeworthy frights make this a psychological thriller for the ages. Just want to be perfect. Number two, The Silence of the Lambs. Closer, please. Closer. Audiences may have first danced with Brian Cox as the devilish Dr. Hannibal Lecter in 1986 with Michael Mann's masterpiece Manhunter. 
but it was Anthony Hopkins' portrayal of the brilliant but deranged Lecter that remains in fans' minds. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Bye. Director Jonathan Demme struck gold when he helmed 1991's The Silence of the Lambs, a story of rookie FBI agent Clarice Starling and her search for the disturbed serial killer known as Buffalo Bill. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> yes, you will, precious. You will get the hose. Cox and Hopkins both play Lecter with the expected levels of class and wit. But it's the latter's iconic declaration of his preferred dinner accompaniment that truly gave audiences chills. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Before we unveil our most psychologically damaging film, here are a few thrilling honorable mentions. People tell the world you're crazy. And all your protests to the contrary just confirm what they're saying. I'm not following you, I'm sorry. Once you're declared insane, then anything you do is called part of that insanity. Oh, God. This is insane. You must be. Jack Stan, you talking to me? Talking to me? Well, then who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? Swamp one around. Thirty yards up, maybe quicksand. Nobody said anything about quicksand. Up at the rounders? No, Sergeant. What, what are they? They're gynecological instruments for working on mutant women. Mutant women? That's a great theme for a show. Any for God's sake. Shh, darling. Trust me. God's sake. It's for the best. Hey, please! <laughs> Number one, Vertigo. Give me your hand! Alfred Hitchcock was known as the master of suspense and delivered on this title time and time again with a bevy of cinematic classics. Before Hitchcock graced us with the presence of one Norman Bates in Psycho, however, he first told us the story of John Scotty Ferguson, a San Francisco detective with a crippling fear of heights and a mysterious woman who may not be all she seems. But only one is a wanderer, two together are always going somewhere. In 2012, Vertigo earned the honor of toppling Citizen Kane as the greatest film of all time, according to Britain's distinguished Sight and Sound magazine. And with good reason, for this psychological thriller possesses a near-perfect amount of character depth and plot twists to keep audiences guessing right until the very end. You, you were the cop, you were the counterfeit, weren't you? Was she dead or alive? Dead, you... dead, he's rubbing her neck! Do you agree with our list? Which psychological thriller do you think tortured minds enough to warrant inclusion? Leave me alone! For more psychotically awesome top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Who the f do you think you're talking to?